needs her to get a negative one as the exponent first. She added what together? The exponents. Yeah. The exponents. Why is she allowed to do that? Because the, they have the same base number. The same base number. Very good. I like the, the official vocab we're using. So they got the same base. We're multiplying the numbers at the same base, we can add their exponents together. Very good. So we can do that. Let's just uh, quickly remind ourselves, though, like prove it, convince ourselves that is the rule. Not just because we memorize it, but because it works. So if you use the example of a to the fourth times a to the third, we know that's a to the seventh. We add the exponents together. But what's the convincing little argument that proves it to us that we can add those exponents together? Same base. What's that? Same base. They have the same base. That just reminds me that the rule applies. But how, do, how could I verify from what I know about exponents, like in the definition of exponents? Oh, you can just write it out like long way. Write it out long way, a times a times a times a. OK, then we got a times a times a. That's what these two numbers are. And we're just multiplying them together. So just a string of 7, 4 plus 3, 7 factors of a. So there we go. Okay. We could do that with any example we could possibly think of. We could do it with a to the m times a to the n. That would be a times a times a a bunch of times. m times. This one would be a times a a bunch of times. That would be n times. You can see there's m of them. There's n of them. There's m plus n factors, so a to the m plus n. So we establish that as a rule, and then we say, hey, the rule still applies, even if the exponent is negative. So we'll add them together, we get negative 1. Okay. Same bases being multiplied. So we'll add exponents. In the final step, though, what mistake does Leone make? So it, it comes down to the, the, a misunderstanding about what a negative exponent means. Okay? I'm going to say something here, and I'm going to say it about seven times in a row. And my hope is that it will just stick here. This negative exponent has nothing to do, nothing to do, nothing to do, doesn't have anything to do with whether or not this number is negative. This negative exponent does not tell this number to be negative or positive, it has nothing to do with whether or not this number is negative or positive. Okay? And I don't say that over and over to, to patronize you or anything like that. It's just really would love for that to be driven home right after we learned about the negative exponents, okay? the very next day. Uh, and I'll keep trying to help you remember that, but this negative exponent doesn't have anything to do with the negativeness of this number. Okay? As Riley said, the negative exponent, the meaning of a negative exponent, is that this number is really raised to this exponent, but in the denominator, under 1. Okay? You could raise that to the 1, but 2 thirds to the 1 is just 2 thirds. Well, now we're taking 1 and we're dividing it by 2 thirds. How do you divide 1 by 2 thirds? Multiply by the reciprocal, 1. Uh, over 1, if you like, right? 1 over 1, times the reciprocal of 2 thirds, <coughs> 3 halves. You need to remember the negative exponent has to do with numerator, denominator stuff, not whether or not the number is negative. And just as a quick note, a little bit of an aside, if we had like 5 fourths, or any fraction, that's 5 fifths. <laughs> Five fourths to the negative, let's say three. Okay. Um, I'll tell you the quick version. You can just write this as four fifths, the reciprocal, to the third. And then each of these can get a, a third power, or we can write <coughs> three factors of four fifths, and we'll get four times four times four, which is 
uh, 64 over 125. So if we have a fraction raised to a negative, uh, we, we're really supposed to apply the negative exponents to both numbers, which is going to cause them to, if it's in the numerator to the negative, move to the denominator, vice versa. If it's negative exponent in the denominator, it would move to the numerator. So that's what's happened here, four fifths, so raised to the third. So a negative exponent, it really, I mean, it, it really always means the reciprocal of this number is what you're actually dealing with. Reciprocal of this number, the negative exponent part, the negative part of it means reciprocal, the reciprocal being raised to the third power. Um, however you want to look at it. <coughs> so, negative exponent doesn't have anything to do with what? The number being positive or negative, or positiveness or negativeness of the number. Okay. So Cecil uh, does, he's working this out. His first step is here. I want you to write with your pens and pencils, or maybe just uh, one or the other. Not, not you both. Um, what's wrong with that? What is wrong with that first step? Write it on down. Sometimes that gets forgotten, especially when it's a number for some reason. I'm not sure what it is, but maybe it's because we kind of throw these together or, or something. But this five gets forgotten when we're supposed to give each number that exponent. So it really should get an exponent of negative three. <coughs> okay. We're going to work this out and show it correctly, but just before that. Um, so. See, should give five an exponent. So let's just jump down to this final step real quick. We have t to the twelfth in the denominator. It was right here. Now let's jump down to the denominator. Why is that? that and we don't know why. Uh, what is that? Do what? Right, it's to a negative exponent and it's right now really in the numerator. This could all be over one and so we move it down to the denominator. Let me help you remember why. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll kind of use what we, we talked about here, what I stated when we were talking about this. A negative exponent means, <coughs> pardon me, the reciprocal of this number is raised to this power. The reciprocal of 2 thirds is raised to the first. That's 3 halves of the first. The reciprocal of 5 fourths, the reciprocal is 4 fifths, is being raised to the third power. So we use that, the reciprocal of this number is what that negative exponent means. Reciprocal. Not negative number, reciprocal of the number. So we'll work it out this, this way, starting from here with the negative 3 exponent for 5. OK, so 5 to the negative 3 means the reciprocal of 5 raised to the third. Or really, if we're raising one over five to the third, one times one times one is just one. So we could view it as one times one times one is one, and then five times five times five in the denominator. Times, now s to the negative two to the negative three, we multiply those exponents together. s to the positive six over one, if you like, and we're multiplying fractions together. We might as well look at it as an S fraction. Uh, t to the 4 to the negative 3, that's going to be t to the negative 12 over 1. Okay, so we have 1 over 5 to the 3rd times S to the 6 over 1 times, really, we're looking at the reciprocal of t, which is 1 over t to the 12th, or we could write it as t to the 12th in the denominator. 
Now if we multiply all these together, we get s to the sixth in the numerator. We multiply all these together. 5 to the third is 125 times t to the twelfth. Short answer, well, t to the negative 12 means t to the 12th, to the positive 12th should be in the denominator. If it was in the denominator to start with, it should move up to the numerator. So Tamara simplified the expression incorrectly. It looks like what she was meaning to do is to take this thing that she circled and move it into the numerator. Yeah, I think you can see probably why she did that, but why, why is it that she did it incorrectly? What is it she did incorrectly? that down in the notes. What should be wrong? Can you Another common misconception is or we're just, I think, maybe doing it too quickly and not really thinking about what's going on here. You can move a number that's raised to a negative exponent. If it's in the denominator, you can move it to the numerator. But the only thing that's being raised to the negative 1 is D. Okay? C is not being raised to the negative 1. What is C being raised to? The first, a positive one, so it's ready to just stay where it is. So if we move D up here, we get 3C cubed. There's the D that was already there. Here's the D that's moved up from the denominator, 9C. This is pretty clear, D squared, D times D, 9C. I'm gonna overthink this a little bit and, and over, not complicated, but I'm going to write it so that we can remind ourselves exactly why we can do what we want to do. We want to just cancel some stuff out, right? So let's remind ourselves why we can. We could write it as 3 ninths times c to the third over c times d squared. <clears throat> and really, we can write it any, uh, any way we want. We could write 3 over c, that could be a fraction, and c cubed over 1 and d squared over 9. Okay. That would make a whole lot of sense, though. We would have unlike bases together. But here we can see that there's a factor of 3. This also has a factor of 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. This guy, uh, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So that's the left. We got c times c times c here. That's what c cubed is. c divided by c is 1. 1 times c times c, that's c squared c squared up here, we got 3 down here, multiply these together. So far we've got 1 times c squared, and we got d squared, no cancellation here, there's no other d factors in the denominator. Um, and let's see. Yeah. So c squared, Divided them both by three. Three divided by three is one, and nine divided by three is three. Oh, okay. So here we subtract polynomials. Is something wrong on that first line in, in your notes? A little note to yourself, or anybody who might read it. Should have done or did do something he should have done. Ellie? Um, he didn't, didn't distribute the negative one. Got a negative one times this parentheses, gotta handle that. 
So it turns out this is correct, but we should get a negative 4b to the fourth and a positive 7. This is all kind of wrong. So let's recalculate here. 2b to the fourth, negative 4b to the fourth, negative 2b to the fourth. Let's see, cubed. We got negative 6b cubed, nine, minus 9b cubed. That's negative 15b cubed. That turns out to be the same because it ju he just left out that he did have a 9 in front of or a negative in front of that 9. Um, there's b plus 5b. Okay, and plus. Molly. She's trying to multiply these two polynomials together. Um, first, she draws the arrows. So, she did this again, right, in your notes? Describe what, the, what her rationale is behind that. Why would she be doing that? got a reason, and I'll just make it clear. Her reason is not because that's the right thing to do and something else would be the wrong thing to do. Why is she doing it? Why is she drawing those arrows? To make it easier to distribute. To make it easier to distribute, right? There's a lot of stuff to distribute, and a lot of stuff to distribute that stuff to, right? We got two things to distribute. That's the polynomial on the left. We got three things to distribute both of those things to. That's six things. You could easily lose track. And it's a good practice to have, especially if you were going to multiply a four-term polynomial by another four-term polynomial. That's 16 terms you're going to wind up with. Making sure you get all of those uh, can be tricky if you don't have some way of keeping track of all that. So as a means to keep track of it, she knows that she has to multiply everything in here, this thing and this thing, by everything in here, this, this, and this. So each time she does one of those multiplications, she draws an arrow to keep track of it, so that's a good practice. To keep track. Something does go wrong here, so our final line is incorrect. So close. She, she combined all the like terms, but probably just lost track. Right? She just lost track. So uh, she just forgot the negative three a squared. What's something she could do to make sure that she doesn't lose track of that stuff? Cross them out. Cross them out as she goes along. Okay, that's what I do. <coughs> Doesn't mean it's the right thing or even the best thing to do. Anybody else do anything differently to keep track? Amy? For the different exponents, I put different shapes around the ones with the numbers. Okay. Like I put like triangles around ones with like a. The, the whole term or just the exponent? Yeah, and then. So like, like that. Yeah, and, and then like squares around the ones and circles. Just. Uh, so the squares will do the circles, and then. The, you do that as you go along, or you just do them all at once? Well, I just go through and just mark them, and then I go and put them together. Okay, so here's the A terms, maybe with squares. And then you got your constant, maybe with a new shape or without a shape at all. That's good. That helps us see it all at once. That's good. Anybody do anything else? <coughs> okay, that's a new one. Haven't heard that one. That's great. Shapes and colors are really good. Uh, for our brains to quickly separate out information. So 
you can color code or shape code those. Uh, I had another person in another class who said that, well, and she multiplies them out. There's 2a cubed. Okay, so that was the first thing she did. And then uh, that's an a squared. So that's not a like term, so we'll just write it there. That's not a like term with any of these. But she gets the negative 3a squared. So, so far, she's found this. 20a squared minus 4a. And this a squared, that's a like term with negative 20a squared, so she'll just put it down here. Line them up vertically so that she knows that she'll get them all at once. Uh, here's a like term with an a, that's an a term, so we'll put that there. And then that's, a, that's the first constant she's seen, so she'll just leave it like that. So that's another way. So, yeah, just find a way to keep track of all this stuff, and you'll be fine. Questions from some other part of the homework we have? Yeah? Um, on 5.3. 5.3. Can I ask two questions? Okay. Or do you want me to not ask two questions? No, it's still probably two questions. Yeah. 27 and 42. 27 and 42. Mm -hmm. 27 is the word where something is done incorrectly. This is what the work looks like. Okay. Okay. Seven cubed is, uh, I'm going to assume it is 343, and if we do two x cubed, we'll get uh, two cubed is eight, and x cubed is x cubed. Okay, that, that's correct. Um, what's wrong here? something mean? Wait, yeah, never mind. Never mind? Okay. If we did multiply this by itself three times, we would get three x's times each other. That would be x cubed. But that kind of brings up a mistake. What does it mean to cube something? Multiply three times. Multiply three times by itself. No. Okay. Did she do that? No. No, she really didn't. She kind of got a rule mixed up that lots of people get mixed up, right? If it were... 2x times 7, which would be a weird way to write that, because we just write 14x, right? But if it were that, then we would do 2 to the third times x to the third times 7 to the third. Okay. But this is a multiplication, it is subtraction. Um, the reason why that works out when we're multiplying is. But still, we're going to multiply it by itself three times. That's 2x times 7 times 2x times 7 times 2x times 7. But that's just a, a string of multiplying stuff together. Okay? So we get 2 times 2 times 2, because we can just rearrange the multiplication in any order we want, times x times x times x times 7 times 7 times 7. 2 cubed, x cubed, 7 cubed. But I'm confused on why you just to show you maybe where like the, the short circuit was in this person's brain, okay. where they're like they're confusing this with this. Okay. But what this actually is, not that, it's 2x minus 7 times 2x minus 7 times 2x minus 7. Well now we've got multiplication across parentheses with addition, addition of a negative. So multiplication distribu distributes across addition, across subtraction. So we have to distribute this into that, and then get all that, and distribute the result into here. Okay. 
Um, and you can just point out a mistake that happens really often, and um, well, we don't want to make this mistake. Okay? So say you're going to go to multiply these together. That's what you should do, multiply these together. The mistake would be taking 2x, multiplying it by 2x, and also by this 2x. Okay? And then I don't even know really, it's wrong. So I don't really know how to write it down, right? Because there would be no right way to do this incorrectly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, but in, in, in some, maybe, maybe, I don't know, you get um, 4x squared, uh, maybe in one parentheses and in another parentheses also get 4x squared. And so the thing I'm saying here is do not distribute across two sets of parentheses. Okay. Here's one way of looking at why it doesn't even make sense. Okay. This is just a number, there's a one, times a second number, times a third number, so it's like two times three times five. I'm gonna apply three numbers together. Would you take two, multiply it by three, and multiply it by five? No. No, you're just gonna multiply two times three, get that over with, and then multiply the result by five. Okay. I realize there's a, like this confusion about distributing all the parentheses that we see, but we can only do two things together at once. And we get done with that. And then we bring in the other thing. Which, well, now that we've done these two things, now that's one thing. We put them all together. There's one thing to put together with now. What is a second thing? Okay. So do two uh, together at one time, and then bring in the other one. And then you can do an infinite string of polynomials. And just keep bringing in the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So that's 27 and 42 was next? Mm -hmm. That memory. It's very much the same thing. It's very similar. We're going to take this to the third, which means we're going to do this times itself three times. But we'll actually do it this time, because that's what this problem is asking us to do. So as What's stated before, pick two of them. It doesn't matter which two, but take two of them and multiply them together first. These two or these two, it doesn't matter. Just like it doesn't matter if we do three times five first, or two times three, or two times five, or five times two, right? It doesn't matter the order that we do this. All right, so, what? Back in your oh, that's okay. Back in your cell is just fine. Nine t squared minus 12 t. Right, distribute that 3t to both of these guys. And then negative 12t again, plus 16. Okay, that's, now remember, we're going to take the result of this and multiply it by this, the whole thing, the whole result of this thing. Um, the reason I bring that up, let's put together like terms first. This is what I've seen on the tests quite a few times as, as I'm grading them. So you get the result of multiplying these two things together, and then the parentheses go away, and you wind up just having 16 times this stuff, right? And then just distributing the 16 and then adding the result together. But it, it's saying take this, this whole thing, this whole thing, and multiply it by that thing. And then you distribute everything in here to over here. Just be careful about that. Um, so, here we go. I don't think we've done this together as a class yet. We're going to distribute these three things over these two ones. Okay, so, 9t times 3t is 27t squared. 9t times negative 4 is negative 36t. Colors are nice. To our eyes a break here. Uh, negative 24 times 3, negative uh, 72t squared. Negative 24t times negative 4, positive uh, 96? 96t. Thing to 
distributed to 16. 16 times 3. square terms together. There's one, and there's one. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't carry that square. This is actually to the third power. T cubed, that's the only cubed term down to that. Uh, here we get a couple of squares. So minus 108 T squared. Use those. We got two T terms here. So 134 T. This is different, but it's also the same. We're still going to multiply it by itself three times. Okay. And remember, we normally have like 7x minus x squared or something like that. And when you multiply those terms together, we're just going to add the exponents and we get this x at the higher exponent. When you multiply an x times a y, that doesn't happen. We just have an x times y. Okay. And if we multiply an xy times a y, well, that's x times y times y, which is xy squared. So let's see how this plays out. 7x times 7x is 49x squared. And then we get a negative, minus 7 times x times y. That's done. And we move on to the negative y. Minus 7xy. So we got 7x times negative y is negative 7xy. Uh, and then negative y times negative y, that's plus y squared. There's that. We're going to multiply that by 7x minus y. Put together like terms, 49x squared. Well, this is an xy term, this is an xy term. So you can put those together. So 7 times 49. Could be negative 49x squared times y. There's no way to put those together, x squared and y. They're different bases. So the color is nice. Okay, so we got negative 14 times 7. That's negative. So 98 is the number, negative 98. Uh, x <coughs> times x is x squared times y. There's a y there. Next, negative times negative is positive. 14xy times y, that's x and then two factors of y. y squared times 7x, that's 7 times x times y times y, that's y squared. And then y squared times negative y is negative y to the third. There's only one x cubed term, 343x cubed. 
cubed. And then these two are, they're like terms, right? They both have an x squared times y, x squared times y. They're the exact same thing. So an ex exact same kind of thing. So negative uh, 1. That's right. Give it in my head. I'll fly. Those got used. Here's an xy squared and an xy squared. They're the same thing. We can put those together. So 14 plus 7 is 21. xy squared. And then finally, the only y cubed. So minus y cubed. <coughs> right. So it, it's really similar. Uh, it's just slightly different because if this were an x, then here at the end we would have had x times x uh, times another x, okay, instead of times the y, uh, which is kind of the way to look at it. Um, so we're, instead of having x's, we're multiplying by y's. <coughs> Smells great. It's soft. I got it cut yesterday. I'll take your word for it. Soft. Um, next question. Um, let's be done. Yeah, I think. Since there's so many people gone, you might as well just not have those. I know. Oh, yeah, I never heard that How one. How many before. people are actually gone? Uh, like, there's got to be one or ten plus. I think that's the rule for that. Eight, nine. There should be a rule for that. The rule is they're gone voluntarily, so we see each other. Not really voluntarily. They were forced to do it? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 But none of them are completely voluntary. Mm. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. Technically, I don't have to be here. Uh, You're right. And if you don't show up, then I'm not going to stop because you didn't show up. <laughs> Uh, in the last section, we talked about what polynomial is. So just remind ourselves here at the top of this section what a polynomial is. Um, can anybody remember <laughs> what a polynomial is? What makes a polynomial a polynomial? More than one. Okay, polynomial means many, more than one. Yep. Poly means more than one. Nomial means no, uh, number. number or term. I like to think of it as as term. Like two x y. 2xy? Write it down. 2xy. <laughs> now that, ooh, I can't that. But Plus. with the <laughs> polynomials that we want to use, we'll have just one variable. 2x squared. 2x squared. 7x plus 12y. Yeah, yeah. But that's another variable. We want to just keep it to one variable. Plus 12x. Uh, to the fourth. Sorry. Okay. Plus. 42 plus 1. Minus 7. 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 Everything, right, this, and this, and this, and if there's a negative, notice I circled the negative along with it. Every thing that's separated by addition, right, this is really plus a negative 7x to the 7. So everything that's separated by addition is called a term, okay? These are all terms. Your um, um, <laughs> S looks like a 5. <laughs> I was thinking it's five or four uh, Okay, what are these things called? They're multiplied by the variables. Not oh, this one. No, Whoops, I missed this Constant. Constant. It's called what? Constant. Coefficient. This is a constant. What's that? Oh, coefficients. coefficients. Wow, you are. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. Coefficient five. <laughs> uh, this, since it doesn't have a variable with it, 
it is called the constant. That's a special exponent because it's the highest exponent. Now, if you look at the term that has the highest exponent, uh, its coefficient is a special coefficient. Because it's negative. Not because it's negative, but because it's with the highest power. Okay, so it's the coefficient of the variable that has the highest power in the polynomial. It's a special coefficient is called the leading coefficient. terms. Uh, all of them are terms. We have a, this one is the constant term. These are all variable terms. All these guys that are multiplied by the variables are called coefficients. The one that's with the, uh, the highest degree, the highest power is called the leading coefficient. So what's the leading coefficient of this polynomial? Seven. Negative seven. Negative seven. Very good. And the highest exponent is what we call the degree. Degree five. Degree five. It's a fifth degree polynomial. It's a degree five polynomial. I like fifth degree better. Okay. Well, you're the one that said degree five. Well, he said it first. No, you <laughs> did. No, you did. No, I didn't. No, I'm looking at him, but I'm talking to you. Okay. Uh, so we just want to, well, let's just say that, that's a polynomial. And everything that we're going to be given is going to be a polynomial. Uh, so we'll just stick with that and not worry about what's not a polynomial. but really quickly. If you have negative exponents, that's not a polynomial. We can only multiply by uh, x's or whatever variable we want to choose to call it to positive exponents. Okay? And uh, then there's other things like trigonometric functions and all nope. that stuff. Those are polynomials. These are polynomials. And I think if I were to ask you guys for an example of polynomial, you could give me something like this. That's what I want you to be able to say. So that right there, as it sits, is a polynomial. It's many terms. It's got numbers and, and uh, variables and powers and stuff like that. If we put a little f of x here, no or a y. Okay, I won't. I won't use y because gotta get used to this f of x thing. Okay. Now that's a polynomial. But now now it's, it's set up so that like the understanding here is we're going to put in different values of x, oh, and then we're going to no. see what we get for the output, the y value, uh, and kind of track that stuff. That's a function, a polynomial function. Right? So like I said, we're going to plug things in for x and see what comes out for the output, or the y value, or the f of x value. Uh, so let's give that a try. And it's going to be... You know, it's going to require some attention to detail. Maybe take it a little slow. Make sure you keep track of everything as you're uh, evaluating these polynomials. By evaluate, I just mean plug in a number for x and see what you get out for y. So it shouldn't be hard. Not, not a difficult concept. Just <laughs> it's possible to make mistakes. It's not, it's, uh, it's not difficult to make mistakes. It's easy to make a mistake here. Um, <coughs> JK. Lost and found this month. <laughs> it's been there since like the first day of school. That's a lie. It's not a lie. Abby, your face. It's a lie. No. Right here. All day. Oh my god, that was so not a thing. So if you look at number 15, it's saying, uh, it says x is negative 1. Let's just start out a little easier than negative 1. Let's start with uh, 2. Okay, we're just going to plug in 
2 for x. Okay? We're going to evaluate this polynomial function for x equals 2. All right, so go for it, plug in 2, do all the stuff you're supposed to do, and see what you come out with. Hey. What? So, that's what we're going to do good today. What? I'm just talking. <laughs> All right, so here's the function called f. This is the function called f. And x is the input variable. That's why we call it f of x. Okay. f of 2, meaning we're going to plug 2 in, right. looks like this. 5 times 2 to the third minus 2 times 2 squared plus 10 times 2 minus 15. I highly recommend, let's just go like back a step here. Really recommend, maybe even before you plug those in, take out the x's and replace them with empty parentheses. That's really what an x is anyway. It's just a place or some other number to go into. Okay. So they're just sitting there, these variables having no value until you plug a number in there. That's what an x is, it's what a variable is. So then we put two in those places, and we're sure that everything uh, is correct if we work along here. Um, I'm going to show you a common mistake right here. Uh, 10 to the third. No, wrong. Why is that wrong? Because you have to take two to the third, not. Two to the third. Two is the number we're supposed to take to the third. If I wanted to take five to the third as well, I would need Another to parent. include it in the parentheses. <laughs> okay, so not ten to the third, but two to the third, which is eight, and multiply that by five minus two times four plus ten times two. That's twenty. That's fifteen. Okay, five times eight is forty minus eight. Plus one. That's twenty minus fifteen. And that equals thirty-seven. Again, I want you to plug in numbers again. I want you to um, actually let's do this. Same equation. Same equation. Okay. Let's do a few of them. We'll do, uh, this will be x, and this will be f of x. That's just y. Okay. Do one, two, three, negative one, oh, yeah. negative oh, two. Oh negative. my goodness! So we make all of those. We have like seven more. Five, we, well, zero is really easy. One's not bad at all. Two we've already done. Okay, so you really just have like four. Give you a couple minutes to complete this table. I'll complete it as well. I know you may not be done yet, but uh, come back to it. And let's look at let's look at some. Examples, especially these negative ones. Okay? Negatives can cause uh, some issues. We lose track of stuff. Uh, I would imagine the positives probably went pretty well on average, and then the negatives, more likely the mistakes were made. Okay? So to help with that, let's look at negative 3. If you follow this recommendation, I think it'll cut down on a lot of mistakes as we do this uh, substitution stuff, uh, this evaluating. Replace all of your x's with what they really are, which is just empty vessels waiting for something to fill them. And then we'll fill them with what they're supposed to be. And then we'll move forward, just be real careful and taking it nice and easy. Um, negative 3 to the third. What's negative 3 to the third? Negative 27. So 5 times negative 27 is what we have there. What's negative 3 squared? Positive 9. Positive 9. Because when we square something, we're doing it that times itself. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So minus 2 times positive 9. Uh, plus, this should be minus 30. Minus 15.
especially when you watch somebody who's done it lots of times, it's pretty easy, it's, it's not very difficult. You just need to make sure, especially the negatives, keep track of all those negatives, okay? That negative three goes in here, that we do take, especially like with the square, this is probably the thing that comes up the most, is this would come out to be negative nine if you're gonna make a mistake there, okay? You wanna be careful, negative three times negative three, that's what the square is telling us. Square this whole thing, multiply by itself, you should get a positive nine. And then just sometimes you just forget. And a negative times a negative is positive, or you, you lose track of it, your eye doesn't see it, positive times negative is negative, you just gotta remember to keep track of all that stuff. Right. So we got that, that's called direct substitution. When you just take the number, you put it right in there for x, and you do all the calculations by hand, that's called direct substitution. There's this thing called synthetic substitution, which is way faster, kind of magical, Kind of neat. Uh, and we'll learn about that after we talk about this next thing. We're going to talk about end behavior. So, behavior. Let me explain what end behavior means. When we say end, when we talk about the word end, that end is referring to the graph of this thing. Okay. Remember that the graph is just. It's just all the points, x and y. When I put in this x, whatever this x is, I get out this y value and I put a point right there. And if I put a point right there, that means that if I put in the x of this point, then I'll get the y of this point. Put in the x here, I'll get out that y. Here's an x, if I put in this x, negative three, I get out this y, negative 198. If I put in this x of one, I get out a y of negative two. If I put in an x of three, I get out a y of 132. All those points could go on the graph. Now the end behavior, like I said, refers to the ends of the graph. Where do you think we'll find the ends of the graph? This one, okay, that's getting towards the end. Will this ever end? No. Officially be done? Never. No, but if we move towards the end, where, which direction would we move? South. It looks Forward. like it's doing that. Down. Here's one question. Down. Will it keep going now? Maybe if we put in a, a big enough negative number, maybe it'll turn back into positive numbers. What? Maybe that could happen. But that's our job to decide well, yeah, what that could graphs. happen. These graphs go all wavy, they're all crazy. How do we know what they're gonna do on the ends? Okay. So one of the ends is this direction, okay? So we look as we go this direction, as we put in bigger Forward. negative numbers, what happens in the y direction? Does it keep going down? Or does it eventually, for some reason, come back up? And the other end is in this direction. As we go this direction, as we put in bigger x values in the positive direction, what will the function do in the y direction? Okay. We want to explore that. <coughs> so what do you think? We're going to plug numbers into this expression right here. Okay. So if we keep putting in bigger and bigger positive numbers for x, we, we see this, like it starts going up towards the positive. Do you think it'll just keep going up into the positive and never come back down? No. No? Yeah? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So we gotta maybe think of a way to think of this problem uh, in, a, in a way that convinces us that it does one or the other thing. It's gotta do one or the other. Okay? At some point, it is just going to keep going either up or going down. This is the nature of polynomials. And to help you see why, I'm gonna, the visual learners, um, start with this one, okay? Start with a real simple polynomial. This polynomial is x squared plus x plus one. Okay, we don't even have any negatives in there, nice and clean, okay? This guy right here is controlled by A, a is one right now. If I slide this around, it'll change what A is. We can change what B is. We can change what, change what C is. A, B, and C. And then we can change what X is, right? What gets plugged in for X by moving this around, right? So in this function, as we put in bigger values for Y, uh, what do you think the whole thing is going to do, right? If we were to take this a chart like this and just keep putting in bigger and bigger numbers, kind of y values do you think we would see? Bigger. Big positive ones? Why do you think that? Because you're putting bigger numbers in. 
Okay? And we're just adding them together. Right? Now, if we were subtracting numbers, that yeah, maybe there's a question about what happened there. But they're all positive. Putting in positive numbers, adding them up, they, of course, they're just going to be these big positive numbers. Okay? So let me show you what's going on here. Let's say we put in 2 for x. Then, then what will this be worth? Two. Put in Three, 2 four. for x? Oh. Four. 4 times 1, four. 4. Right? So if I move this over to 2, this is worth 4. Right? This is 2 times 1, that's 2. 1 is, well, just 1, it's always 1. Over here you see the 4 plus the 2 is 6 plus the 1 is 7. Okay, so this just represents not the graph of the function, but just the y value of the function. Okay? Uh, if I move it over to 3, what should this be worth? It should be 9, this should be 3, and this should be still 1. Okay, there's 9, there's 3, there's 1. following along. And you can see when I added those together, well, that's just, it's going off the charts. It's going to get way, way positive. Okay? And if I keep putting in bigger numbers for x, all these terms are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and adding them together is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, let's take it back down to 1. Okay, now think about this function if I put negative numbers in for x. Now, now this is going to become negative, right? So subtracting So what do you think? If we were to make a chart like this one here and keep putting in bigger and bigger negative numbers, go to negative 4, negative 5, negative 100, right? what kind of values will we see in the y? Will we see these big negative numbers or will we see these big positive numbers? It's got to be one or the other. Well, if we go, it'll dive into the negatives. What if it's squared? So now what, what about the square, Carl? What do you where negative is just still positive. Okay, so we're putting negative numbers in here, which will be negative, but when we yeah. put negative numbers in for square, yeah. the negative number squared is positive. Mm -hmm. So now we have these big positive numbers. Okay. Um, well, so this one's will be this one's will be positive, these ones will be negative. So I guess it kind of comes down to who's gonna win. Is the big the, the positive numbers gonna make the whole thing positive? Or the negative number is going to bring it down to the negative. Positive. Why? Because it's squared. Is bigger. Squared's bigger? Squared's bigger. Let's see. Mm -hmm. The negative. Okay, well, right now our total is, let's see, we add one and take one away and add one at the top of this, this final blue rectangle is that one. So, one. Okay? Um, in zero, these two go to nothing. Or sorry, I'm at zero. I should go more negative. Okay. But now this is a a four. Negative two squared is, is positive four. Minus the two. Well, that's four is so much bigger than than minus two that it still stays in the positive. And then we add a one, and so it's definitely at the positive, right? We wind up at three overall. Is this going to keep happening? We're going to keep having positive yeah. numbers after yeah. this. Yeah, we are. It just keeps on going and going and going and going. Like it's just, it's off the charts, we can't even see it anymore, it's just gonna keep going positive, and it's never gonna come back down? Nope, never. No, this, uh, this pink guy right here, here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shrink the Y axis down so that you can, we can uh, see more of the pink and the green bars. Okay, so we're shrinking yeah. it down. Wow. Now you can see the green one has come back into, into view, uh, and the, the pink one still can't see it, there it is. Okay, so the pink one is 256, the green one is only negative 16, and x is only negative 16. That's not a big number, really. But negative 16 squared is huge. It's way bigger than minus 16. Okay, now what about, okay, let's bring it back to 1. I'm bringing it back to 1. There we are. And we'll stretch this back out. And there we go. Um, now let's say we make that, instead of plus 1 right here, this, this b term, let's make it a, like this big negative number. Okay, now it's negative 20. Now that's, that's much bigger. right? It's subtracting off a lot. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen as we let x get really big? You think now we've given like a lot of power to that middle term by making it a big old negative number. Maybe it'll start out negative, but it'll end up positive. Eventually, it's going to have to go positive. Why? Well, because at negative 16, it was 
bigger and faster than the Yeah. Other well, but I mean, when x is six, when x is sixteen, you got twenty times sixteen. That's really big. Yeah, but eventually. Eventually. Eventually is the, and that's what we're talking about. Eventually, big values of x, the ends, right? The so ends are eventually. Okay. So uh, let's let x get really big. Would it just be once you get past twenty? Yeah. Why do you say that? Because Right. So no matter what, this will all this x will always be multiplied by negative twenty, which is really big when x is something like two or three or four. And once you get to twenty, this will be twenty times twenty, and this will be twenty times twenty. So they'll be like equally matched. But then once you get past that to twenty one, then this will be still twenty times twenty one, this will be twenty one times twenty one. Very good observation. You go, Carlos. Yeah. Okay, so for right now, this is still very, very large. Okay, well, keep going. Let's take it to 20. See what happens there. That's very big. Uh, look, they're evenly matched. 400 and negative 400. Go to 21. Go to 21. 441, negative 420. Okay. So, and from here on out, any x bigger than that, the pink is definitely going to be bigger than the green. And and at some point, it just becomes ridiculous to even compare the two. Right. Let's just let's take it way way out there. I'm almost to the to the max of my slider here, but the com to compare ten thousand and negative two thousand is really not a comparison. It's so much bigger, and if we could just keep going for infinity, that square term is going to be so much bigger that it's just going to run away with the whole thing. Okay. Yep. So. Let's bring it back over here. Let's try and uh, use our inductive reasoning and um, generalize it. Okay, so I'm just going to stay over here because I have to be over here to do some of this stuff. And we'll eventually get this to work. There we go. Okay. So because the square was the biggest power, it was going to be the biggest term. Right? Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, and, well, let's see here. Even if, we, even if we let this at negative 20, what about if we go into the negative numbers? Into negative x's? Yeah, it's still going to be the same thing. Still going to be the same thing. And in fact, since it's negative, the negative 20 times a negative number will actually be positive as well. And so it's really going to be going into the positive numbers. Okay? But it's really all about this guy. That's what we're getting to, right? It's that. What about this makes it in, in control? The square. The square. It's the biggest, uh, the biggest power that you see. And that, what's that biggest power called? Degree. The degree. Okay. Go, Misty. What's that say? Uh, here we go. There we go. Okay. So for a, a second degree, that's not the word degree. Is that what you use when you do your little videos? Online. Oh. Little, so that's your name sounding. No, I was. <laughs> You're little. Those so if it was amazing, cube? fabulous videos. Yes, this is what I use for amazing, fabulous videos. So for a second degree, because you're squaring it, if you square a positive or you square a negative, it's still going to be positive. And since that square is the biggest one, it's going to be the biggest influence. And so whatever the square does, that's kind of what the whole thing is going to do, right? Whatever right. the square term does, that's what the whole thing is going to do. Um, so if we were to look at the graph, and we were to move towards the right on the x-axis. Okay? So our graph is doing, I don't know what it does in the middle. We're talking about on the right side. Eventually, what's the y value going to do? Big in the which direction? Big and tall in the right direction. Up. So as it moves to the right, it also will move up. And so we'll see the right side of the graph look something like that. And on the left side, we put in big, big negative numbers. We're going to see. The same thing happened over there. The y value becomes big, big, big positive numbers. Yes? Yep. Do we all agree? OK. I do. Now, is it only for second degree polynomials that that'll work? No. Yeah. Yes. Any time that we can take a positive number, take it to a power, and it's positive, or a negative number, take it to a power, and it's also positive. Yeah. So what powers will do that? Oh, even. even powers, because it'll Take the thing times itself an even number of times. So not just second degrees will look like this. But fourth and sixth. 
fourth and sixth, eighth, twelfth, tenth. Fourth. That's a tricky one. Any even degree. Any even degree. You guys are doing great. Doing great. Keep it up. Here we go. Here's some more. Okay. So let's zoom. Zoom back in. Okay, bring it to X. We'll make B. And two and one again. All right. Now that that will work, except for maybe we think about this possibility that A is say negative one. So the number in front of the X squared is now a negative number. So as we put in big X values, what's going to happen to this pink bar? It's going to go down. It's going to go down. It's always going to go into the negative. Yeah. Why? Because it's being multiplied by a negative. So That's this, positive number. yeah, this Wait. always positive number. Unless it's like cubed or six. Okay. No, so that's six. Seven. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're talking about odd ones. So we'll just address the square and we'll expand it out to all the even ones. Okay. If we square something or take it to an even power, and if that's the biggest one, if that's the degree is even, then the biggest term in the polynomial will always be, well, if it's multiplied by negative, altogether, will be always negative. Because uh -huh. right? yeah. this will always be positive, and we'll multiply by this always negative, so it'll always be negative. And we can see that happening here. We can zoom back out. And see that it just goes negative, negative, negative. And this is so small, as we talked about before, it doesn't compete. And so the whole thing goes negative. Okay. If, if the exponent is an odd number, then it's going to be... We'll look at that up. right, almost right now. For, for right now we're going to say... Oh. Also even degree. Well, what was different about this even degree that causes it to be that when we go to the right, right, then the y values dive down to the negatives, and we go to the left and put in big negative numbers for x, we get big negative numbers for y. Negative leading coefficient. Negative leading coefficient. Even degree, negative... Leading coefficient. So this would, we would put the, the, uh, yeah, the condition that it's a positive leading coefficient. Okay. All right. Are so. Gonna, are we gonna quiz you? Are we gonna give you that test? If you're good. Okay. Well, you have been awesome, but we haven't gotten through all of this stuff. Three minutes. Hey. And those people are talking over there. You guys are chitter chatting. Talking about the math. Talk about Which test? The synesthesia test? Yeah. No, we're supposed to be doing math right now. Math. What else? Okay. What so here doing? is a uh, third degree. Okay, that's yep. an odd degree. Okay. So what's this pink bar going to do? Clearly, we've, we've gonna established that it'll be the biggest. It'll be positive. It'll be positive it'll be as x one. is positive. Boom! It's exploding. It's, it's positive. What about if x is negative? Same thing. We're going to cube this negative number. Oh, wait, no. So negative times negative is positive times a third negative oh. is negative. So but it if goes. But change that one to a negative one. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. So this is clearly the biggest, the biggest term. Okay. If we get positive numbers, it becomes this big positive number. If we put in negative numbers, it becomes these big negative numbers. And clearly, you can see these other terms are so small comparatively that they don't really add much to the thing or, or, or take away much from this being negative 1,331. You can see the blue one represents the last value as negative 1,210, which is not a whole lot off of one, negative 1,331. Negative 1,331. So if we then make a little chart or a little graph for an odd degree, that has a positive leading coefficient, then positive numbers to an odd degree are positive. So as we put bigger numbers in for x, we get bigger positive numbers out for y. And if we put bigger negative numbers in for an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, we go into the negative. But if we let the leading coefficient be negative, it flips everything around. Okay, and now when we put in negative numbers and we get negative when we cube it, we multiply that negative by a negative and we get positive. And if we put in positives, then multiplying by a negative will give us negative. Okay. So odd degree and negative leading coefficient 
will cause the opposite to happen. So it'll go up like this, and then down like that. Okay? And the reason I haven't filled in the middle is because we're not talking about the middles. We're talking about end behavior. On the right end and the left end, what will we see the y values doing? Okay? And just to help you with some of the, the vocabulary that they're going to use, okay? So this is the x value, right? Right. Yep. And so x is moving towards what as x is going this direction? Infinity. infinity. Yeah, x is going towards infinity. And what's y doing as x goes to infinity? Go is going to also positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, this direction, what's y doing? It's going to positive infinity. How about this one? As x goes to infinity to the right, y goes to positive infinity because it's going up. And here as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Good job, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you very much. We'll do that test. Yeah.